Hey, Steve Winston here. I thought it would be useful to run through this article on Investors Chronicle. The date is uh, July 20th, 2023, and it's talking about tax efficient ways landlords can buy, uh, can sell buy to lets. Now, at the moment, uh, increasingly, uh, buy to let landlords are looking at how they can maybe often divest, sell their buy to lets because it's getting increasingly expensive. Mortgage rates are going up at the moment, and you're only getting basic rate income tax relief on the mortgage interest. So for a lot of uh, buy-to-let uh, owners, it's not as efficient, certainly from a tax perspective, as it was. And obviously you've got all the kind of hassle of um, tenants and all the rest of it. And again, with the cost of living crisis, it's no easy uh, thing to deal with. So why don't we look at this? I mean, I'm not going to do all the detail on a lot of the basics, but there's an interesting angle on the SEIS, EIS, sorry, SAS specifically, that I want to look at, uh, which I think is quite useful. So. Obviously, when you sell a property at the moment, the capital gains tax rates are 18% for a basic rate taxpayer, 28% for a higher rate taxpayer. So it's it's uh, it's kind of punished or penalised because ordinarily, nor the normal capital gains tax rate is 10% for basic rate taxpayers, 20% for higher rate taxpayers. But because it's property, unfortunately, you're going to get a, uh, a larger hit, 18 and 28 respectively. On top of this, the capital gains tax allowance is dropping. It was twelve thousand three hundred pounds. It's now down to six thousand, and next year it goes down to three thousand a year. It's nothing. It's really, really poor. Uh, so you know you would be able to get that for the first, say, you know, six thousand, or it was twelve thousand for a few years, twelve thousand sheltered, and then you pay those eighteen twenty percent on the additional amount. But now I say it's dropping all the time. So it's all about how you calculate it and you know, proceeds uh, for the sale of the property, less things like uh, surveyors, values, auctioners, uh, state agent fees, etc. Deduct the capital cost. You can also offset capital losses you sustained on sale of other assets. Now, obviously, these are capital losses. You, it couldn't be on anything within an ISA or anything that's like a tax wrapper. So if you sold uh, another property, perhaps in the past, a loss or something, then you could roll those losses forward and you should, if you recognize them your tax return you should have them available you can offset those against the gain uh is one angle um you also the suggestion here is to look to sell a property during tax year when you yeah when you haven't sold anything else against you, your full cgt allowance <coughs> again if you can time it that way great again with six thousand versus three thousand if it doesn't make a huge difference uh if you live in the property don't forget you can still get a uh, private principal principal private residence relief still ppr but it's kind of tapered. You look back and you kind of get a fraction of it potentially. Joint ownership of a property civil partner means, yeah, if you both use your annual CGT allowance, that can help. Of course, uh, skimming through this, I'm going to do all the detail on here. I want to get to the meat of it, which is here. Yes. So, so one of the lesser known options, not for my clients, I hope, uh, is to invest in. So it's, let me take a step back before we get into this. SES, EIS. Uh, yes, and SES are basically where you invest in a limited company. Uh, so a private, well, it could potentially be an aim listed company, but that gets beyond, beyond into the weeds. You're really looking at investing into a private limited company, um, an SES, EIS compliant company. They can be a, a lot of companies that are out there. Um, and you know, there are certain restrictions. I won't go into all the details now. I've got other videos on this you can look at. Um, but basically, it's investing in a private company for shares in the company. Now, there are two ways that you can look at. Uh, you, so you, the situation here is you've made a gain on a property, uh, you've sold a second property, and you're sitting on a massive gain, you think, right, what I want to do, I've used up my limited, uh, as we went on before, my limited annual allowance, I've looked at any capital losses brought for what I've got, I've looked at all my possible deductions in terms of you know capital expenditure on the actual sale of it, the capital actual value of when I bought the property or any capital enhancements I've made to the property, I've pulled all those levers, I've looked at whether I can transfer it, you know, spouse and all those sorts of things, and now left with a gain, and what else can I do? And here they look at two kind of options. One is for EIS, where basically SES and SES, EIS is kind of the big brother of SES. SES is for smaller companies, uh, SES is for companies that are been trading for less than three years, gross assets less, than th so total assets of less than £350,000, less than 20 employees, um, what else? Um, it can only it can raise a maximum of two hundred and fifty thousand uh, pounds and SES in total. So first was EIS, much bigger figures. I won't get into all those now. But basically, what you can do is you can do this thing called rollover, where you roll over the gain into an EIS, 
Um, and when you roll it over, so you basically you put the gain, the cash from the gain into an EIS qualifying company. You claim rollover relief under EIS. And basically what happens is your gain gets deferred. It's kind of now it's transferred into the shareholding that you have in the EIS company. And it will only pop out at some point in the future when the shares get sold. And if they pop out, you're then subject to whatever capital gains tax rate uh, is in existence at that time. So that's the risk you play. It could be lower, it could be higher. You don't know. Um, that's always the risk with this. But the other one thing to know is if you die, then the capital gains tax dies with you. So a lot of people do this where they keep rolling over. So they get you know the gain and something, roll it over into EIS, pops out when the shares get sold, uh-oh, big tax, I'll roll it over again into something else. Roll it over again, roll it over again until they die, and then they never suffer the, C uh, the uh, capital gains tax, CGT. Uh, so we're going through this, yeah, defer one. If you die while holding the SES, yeah, dies with you. When you sell uh, the EIS investment, the deferred capital gains tax will be CGT rate at the time. The chances could be higher or lower, I mentioned that. Um, and that's the thing to say is you, it could be the case that you know you're a higher rate taxpayer now, <coughs> excuse me, and <coughs> when it comes to the stage where you sell the shares in the future, my voice is going, <coughs> then um, it might be that you're like retired or whatever and you're basically a taxpayer, so that works that much better. Other way you could look at it is SAS. There's a, there's a kind of little known exemption with SAS whereby if you have a gain on something, you can exempt 50% of the gain by reinvesting it into SAS. Um, and what you they give the example here, uh, £150,000 gain, you reinvest £150,000 into SES, SEIS and you only then pay capital gains tax on half of it, £75,000. So it would be the 18% of £75,000 as opposed to 18% of £150,000. Um, and then <coughs> basically that in that case it's not like capital gains tax where it pops out when you sell the shares, it's gone. You've just eliminated half that gain. Um, Bear in mind that the max amount you can invest in a tax year into SES is 200 grand, which means that the maximum gain could be 100 grand. Uh, well, 100 grand will be uh, exempt. Um, so that's it, really. I mean, just useful things to know about, really, that you've got more levers than you think about. And a lot of people don't think, when think about selling a second property, they're not necessarily thinking about EIS and SES. So that's what I want to bring to your attention. I should end by saying SES and SES are horribly complicated rules, but it's worth looking at if you've got big figures. Um, and uh, again, get help, get advice, because I say it's complicated, but you've got these extra levers that not a lot of people know about.